Welcome back to the channel. Today I got uh, information on a rear sway bar for the Ram TRX. Uh, I already got it on there. Uh, but here we go. So we got, uh, I couldn't get the kit because the kit sold out. So I bought it separate. Uh, when you buy the, the sway bar, it does come with two new bolts, or actually four, but two per side. Um, with, uh, the polyurethane and the, uh, the bracket there that holds the polyurethane to it. Um, you know, so you got it for both sides. And then you buy the end link kit here, uh, separate for a two to four inch lift. I can post the part numbers on it. Um, if uh, you guys want, I'll just post it anyway. But uh, I did use the middle hole. There's one hole here, one here, one more in there. The closer the hole you use, <clears throat> the stiffer it is. I put it in the middle. It seemed like I'd just try it there. Um, seems to uh, be fine. Now, I was worried about the sway bar hitting the spare tire, but when you move the vehicle down the sway bar goes down too a little bit so after seeing that unless I'm jumping this thing full force I don't see an issue with it um, I do plan on if I did go do some massive off-roading or something I maybe just take it off but you're looking at the four bolts there and then just take the end links off and the whole thing comes off you probably get it off in about 10 minutes um the other thing is up here that bolt there you do have to buy this bolt it's a m10 by 70 millimeters and then i bought it threads in there's a nut there's like a welded nut to the to the chassis here and then I put a lock nut on here so it will not back off because I the other guy that put this on his he had this problem where this came loose and then it ended up you know falling off so I don't need that happening so the fix for that was to put a lock here so that when it moves around this doesn't unthread itself but other than that I would say it took me about maybe an hour to put on uh, and then just basically, you know, um, just thread those rods about the same length on each side. Uh, this length here, just make it about the same. I would have to say that, uh, the lean on it isn't a hundred percent fixed like I guess these trucks just do it but maybe it's just how you park it the truck looks as if it sits pretty level now um, I don't really notice anything it's kind of hard to see by me recording it like this but I think a lot of stuff that people talk about with the lean is pretty much the ground could just be a little off and uh, it's gonna look like it's leaning anyway so on a level surface I want to say it's within a half inch of the other side um, that could be based on um, the level of the ground but I want to say that it sits pretty level compared to what it did before. Also, um, driving it, it's night and day. Like, uh, you can take a corner and not feel like you're going to tip over. I mean, I'm not saying I'm trying to go around corners like a Corvette, but uh, 
it's quite a bit different. I would uh, definitely recommend it, especially if like you're not gonna, I don't know, go overboard and when you wanna launch the truck or whatever. I mean, I don't even know. The best way is to test it and see if we could get enough load on it to where the bump stops hit and see if that sway bar will hit the spare tire cover. Or There's like a plastic thing that goes around the spare tire. That is the only thing I would see that would it would affect, but it looks like as you pull down on the back end, the sway bar rotates down too. So I think it's going to even out because it looks like as of now, when it sits still, you are about six to seven inches from the bump stops hitting already. So I think that it will move enough to where it wouldn't touch it. So I don't think it's a factor. That and that would mean you would have to bottom out completely too. So I don't know that I haven't jumped it yet. And not, I don't know about the ones I have, if they are even coming close to bottoming out when the damper's kicking like, you know, full stiffness when it's the shocks are extended. So I'm not sure about that, but for a regular, 99% of your use of the truck, if you're not doing that, it's never going to be an issue. I took it on some very uneven surface to test, like, the flex, and I didn't notice anything that would hinder me from doing what I would do with it. And I'm not saying that I would do a, like, heavy off-road with it, but, you know, the same off-road I would have done with my power wagon, I don't see any difference with how the with the rear sway bar that it would affect it so i'm gonna call that a win with that i probably will never take it off um i don't see any reason why i would remove it plus i tow i have a 24 foot car hauler i use a weight distribution hitch i have a video on that um and i have a, a boat that i tow um but with the weight distribution i had no problem on the road like feeling solid side to side and now i mean this is gonna like just seal the deal here with the sway bar and that to combine and now when i tow the boat the boat i can't put a distribution hitch on but don't really need it i mean the boat's probably 2500 pounds with the trailer so that uh not even worried about but again the sway bar will help i mean everybody talks about towing but they never think about like if there is an emergent turn swerve that you have to do or braking everybody thinks oh it tows just fine but sure it might go down the road just fine if you're not doing anything but i mean what if you had to do an emergency uh, move then what how is it going to handle that so that's a lot of people don't think of that part you know you go on a million trips and never have to do anything it just takes one time you got to crank that wheel hard to switch lanes and then that now it's a complete disaster so i do believe it'll help that because i mean this thing feels solid i mean and not in a bad way it doesn't feel stiff it doesn't feel anything i'm talking about you turn the wheel and it stays flat and uh it just f feels a lot much more i don't know if the word is controlled but it just feels it feels way better so i highly recommend it but yeah i will put the uh individual part because this these kits have been sold out because somebody came up with the whole sway bar thing and then uh you know they're like <laughs> telling everybody about it so then everybody's buying the kits up so you finding the kit with the end links and everything in it is going to be probably almost impossible. So um, you're probably going to end up having to do it with the two separate, the bar and the end links. So that's all I got on that. Uh, like there is no point in showing how, I mean, I should, everything I showed you is pretty simple. You, you have two end links and those two mounts and the, the axle already has the threaded holes. I mean, it was it's made to go there. So, which 
I was surprised. I didn't think they were going to be there, but everything's there for you to put it on. So that's that. So if you don't, if you drive it on the road 90% of the time, I highly recommend it. So if any other questions about it, just uh, feel free to ask in the comments and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more on this truck. Um, I'll probably be doing some more driving videos. I, I'm going to have a video coming up on a pulley information and uh, that's already done and it's well worth that. So stay tuned for that. So until next time, we'll talk to you later.